Suricata is high-performance, open-source network analysis and threat detection software used around the globe. Suricata not only produces high-fidelity network alerts, but also a wide variety of other critical network protocol, file transaction, and flow data, all in an industry-standard JSON format for easy ingestion into many popular SIMs. But how do you get from here to here? In this video, we'll explore installing Suricata and a few simple commands in Alma Linux using EPEL, which stands for Extra Package for Enterprise Linux. Alma Linux is an alternative to Red Hat Linux, and the installation steps will be similar for both operating systems. If you're looking for a video detailing installation on Ubuntu, I'll make sure to add a link in the description below. Before we get started, please take a moment and hit that like and subscribe button. Comments are open as well, so let us know what you think of this video. Also, consider joining our community over at forum.suricata.io. Let's get started. For this video, we're going to be able to follow the installation instructions provided at Read the Docs for the Suricata project. You'll find under the Binary Packages section, there is notes for installing in CentOS, Red Hat Enterprise, Alma, Rocky, and other versions. We're going to be using Alma Linux as our base. The relevant commands are the first group using DNF. This is the dandified yum, which is a successor or replacement for yum. There's only three commands that we need to run before we can get Suricata installed. And I'm just going to copy and paste those into a terminal. After executing our first command, you may receive a few yes, no questions. We'll want to select yes to any of these. This next command will essentially enable the repository maintained by the OISF. This helps to ensure that you get the latest stable version of Suricata. Very similar, you'll get prompted for some yes, no questions. The last command is our install command. Running this will install the latest stable version of Suricata on the system. And that's it. To confirm that Suricata is installed, you can run the Suricata command with a dash uppercase V argument. This will provide you with the version number. As you can see here, we have version 7.0.3. Okay, so what's next? Well, we might have to make a few changes to the configuration, although we're not ready to go all in in discussing the configuration quite yet. In order for Suricata to start listening to a network interface, you need to make sure that it's configured to listen to the right one. Using the IPA command, we can list the network interfaces for the host. We want to take note of the name for our primary network adapter. On this system, it's ENS160. Suricata's primary configuration file is a YAML file that you'll find located at etsy suricata suricata.yaml. You'll need to be root in order to edit this file. Upon opening this file, we're going to look for any reference of ETH0. That is the default interface name that the Suricata configuration uses. Since our name is different, we want to update that in order to get Suricata to start listening to that interface. I'm going to use a regular expression in Vi in order to replace every instance of ETH0 with ENS160. You can see it found nine substitutions. This is going to be not only in the configuration, but likely in some of the comments as well. If we go back to the documentation, you'll see there are some instructions for running Suricata as a service. You can use systemctl to start, stop, and even restart the service. You can also use systemctl enable Suricata to enable Suricata to start on boot. Before we start the service, there's one more area we need to take a look at, and that's under the additional notes for RPM installations. The Suricata package is pre-configured to run as the Suricata user, and there are some command line parameters at etsy sysconfig suricata that may need to be tweaked. In particular, this command, which will be used for the service mode, also provides an interface name. So while we changed it in the configuration, we also need to change it here. As you can see, opening this file with a text editor, the dash i argument provides the interface name, which is eth0. I'm going to change that to match the name of the network interface of my system. Now we can go ahead and save this file. If you check the status after installation, you can see that it's loaded, but it's inactive. Now you can use systemctl to start the service. You want to check the status again, because what we're looking for is that it's active and running. If there were any errors, perhaps because you made a typo in the configuration file, 
that the status will not be active and likely there'll be some error information towards the bottom of this output. The primary Suricata output file is going to be located at var log suricata eve.json. And this is that JSON data that we talked about earlier in this video. A quick way to just simply see that we're collecting data, and we know that Suricata then is listening to our network interface, is to cat, tail, or head the contents of that file and redirect it to JQ. JQ is a great utility for working with JSON data. Not only does it provide formatting, but the ability to query that data. In this query, we're just going to filter by the event type, which is the primary record type of data that Suricata is generating. And you can see that we have information there. We have event records for stats, flow, DNS, TLS. So we know that Suricata is collecting data. And that's it. You've got Suricata up and running in Alma Linux. We've just scratched the surface though, so stay tuned as we've got a lot more to help you maximize your Suricata installation.